I, I said, I'm not afraid to die, but what I am afraid to miss the crack that they're going to have when yeah. I'm gone, <laughs> that I'm not going to be here to enjoy yes. it all, you know, yeah. but, but that's what it is. What's going to happen is going to happen to me. It's, it's inevitable that one day this disease is going to get me. It's, we all know that. But I suppose it's just a little bit uncomfortable if you've been with someone for so many years to think that they mightn't be there in the future. It was not a problem for the idea of me having to face the realities of, of what was going to happen and to start thinking about them. I thought them, about them long before anybody approached me uh, with a Think Ahead booklet. They were still whirling around in my mind. I think anybody, to be honest with you, who is facing the kind of illness that I'm facing, it's inevitable that they are thinking about these things. My mum has cancer, so it's very possible that she will get sick in a in a way that is measured or that we can we can sort of work through. But I'm also very aware from times where she's very sick that something very sudden could happen. Well, I think I had was brought to my attention by Helen, my daughter. I hadn't heard of it before, and when she brought home the booklet, uh, I was absolutely delighted because up to that point I had been jotting things down in a notebook trying to get my thoughts together some of the important things in my life that I thought that my family would need to know but the booklet was a revelation to me because everything was set out so beautifully in order that you could follow it clearly and there were things in it that I hadn't actually thought about that I really wouldn't have thought to write down in this booklet so I started filling it out. I haven't finished filling it out. Um, it's the sort of thing that sometimes I pause a little bit and I think about it because you never know. I might change my mind about certain things. This gave her some sort of order and structure to be able to talk about things and it did make her think about things that, and actually me as well and, and the rest of us, think about things that we hadn't thought about before. Um, but it's been kind of liberating for her, I think. It, first of all, it prompted me to think about um, accounts, information that my family will need to know in terms of cancelling various accounts I have. Yes, they might know my bank account and that might be obvious, but uh, in terms of M50 toll, they need to know my account there, they need to know my details of my mobile phone, various things like that I hadn't thought about before. Also, in terms of it, 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 it within the booklet, of Think Ahead booklet, it does say, you know, who would you like to let know if in the event of your death? And yes, my family would have known that I, there are certain friends and within our group they would have wanted, I'd have to tell them about. But there are many, many other people that I would really like to know if something happens to me. For example, colleagues that I worked with, I know they'd want to know. And my family wouldn't have kind of thought about that, I don't think. And equally, it does kind of concentrate your mind on your funeral arrangements. And, you know, I've been able to think about that. I had, had thought about it before the booklet, but it, it makes you really concentrate and kind of think, yes, there are certain things I would like, because my family is Irish Catholic, I'm Canadian Protestant, and we mightn't have the same ideas as to what a funeral would entail. And so it was very important to me to speak to my family and say, this is what I want. And I was able to put it down in black and white. The poem that has a lot of meaning for, for my mom and for us is, is Bannock. When my mom was first diagnosed, I gave her that poem. Um, I suppose it captures the reality that when you're sick or when you're grieving or when you're struggling or whatever, that ultimately you do that alone, that there's no one, no matter how much support you get, you can never, no one can take that pain or that distress or that loneliness away. And, and that poem reflects something about wanting someone to feel buffered and minded and protected in their own internal struggle. On the day when the weight deadens on your shoulders and you stumble, may the clay dance to balance you. And when your eyes freeze behind the grey window and the ghost of loss gets into you, 
May a flock of colours, indigo, red, green and azure blue, come to awaken you in a meadow of delight. When the canvas frays in the curragh of thought and a stain of ocean blackens beneath you, may there come across the waters a path of yellow moonlight to bring you safely home. May the nourishment of the earth be yours, may the clarity of light be yours, may the fluency of the ocean be yours, may the protection of the ancestors be yours. And so, may a slow wind work these words of love around you and a visible cloak to mind your life. <laughs>